Turkey is starting new military operations in Iraq, Erdogan announced. Turkey will continue its fight against terrorism decisively and is poised to resolve problems stemming from the PKK's terrorist presence in northern Iraq this summer, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has vowed. We are about to complete the security circle to secure our Iraqi border. We will permanently resolve the matter concerning our Iraqi border this summer. Erdogan said, we maintain our will to create a 30-40 kilometers deep security corridor along our Syrian border. We are determined to fill with new steps the gaps in this corridor, part of which we have already established with our previous operations, the president said. The writer of Hurriyet newspaper, Abdul Qadir Selvi, announced some details about the military operations to be carried out by the Turkish army. He said that first, a large-scale ground operation will be carried out in the region where the claw lock operation was conducted and an agreement was reached with the Iraqi central government controlled by the Barzani family and the administration of Erbil. Prior to the operation, strengthening of temporary and permanent base areas in the region continues. Terrorist nests within the border of the claw lock will be destroyed by air support operations. The length of the border between Turkey and Iraq is 378 kilometers. It will be implemented with the operation. The lock against terrorism will be closed on our entire 378 kilometer border. The borderline will be reached, including the Kara region, famous for its caves. Caves and shelters belonging to the terrorist organization were destroyed in Gara. But this region will be permanently monitored so that the terrorist organization does not use it again. The caves in the Clawlock area will be cleaned and destroyed. Point operations will be carried out in Gara district, the author noted. Abdul Qadir Selvi emphasized that as in Syria, a safe line with a length of 378 kilometers and a depth of 40 kilometers will be created on the Iraqi border of Turkey. The Turkish armed forces will carry out a lockdown operation. The Iraqi central government and Erbil are expected to provide intelligence support as well as take action against the PKK in Sulaymaniyah and Sinjar. In addition, while Turkey is preparing for the operation in Iraq, diplomacy in Syria will be given importance. The PKK has its main headquarters and training facilities in northern Iraq, from where it tries to infiltrate Turkish territories to attack security forces and civilians. The Turkish government has been actively trying to eliminate the PKK presence in northern Iraq and in northern Syria through operations. Czech President Petra Pavel, the army could be sent to Ukraine. Czech President Petra Pavel did not rule out the possibility of sending foreign troops to Ukraine. He said that European leaders should not limit themselves in terms of assistance to Kyiv. Pavel urged Ukraine's partners to extend the forms of aid for Ukraine, including the presence of foreign troops in Ukraine. He noted that it was not about sending combat units, but about different forms of aid and non-combat participation. I endorse searching for new ways to help, including continuing the discussion about a possible military presence in Ukraine. Let's not impose limits on ourselves if we do not have to, Pavel said adding that Europe must play a bigger role in deterring Russia. Pavel added that there was no difference whether Ukrainian soldiers would undergo training with Western instructors abroad or directly in Ukraine. Ukraine remains a sovereign state, even though it was attacked, he said, noting that a possible training mission is not a violation of any international rules. We decide on our own which form of aid to choose, he added. The Kremlin has warned that if NATO sends combat troops, a direct conflict between the alliance and Russia would be inevitable. Last month, Pavel announced at a security conference in Munich that the Czechs had identified 800,000 pieces of artillery ammunition in various countries and were seeking funding for their acquisition to ship to Ukraine. About 15 countries, including Britain, Belgium, Denmark, Canada, Sweden and the Netherlands, have voiced 
their support for the plan, the Czech government said. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, as well as leaders of Germany, the UK, Sweden, Poland and other European NATO member states, ruled out sending Western troops to Ukraine. Later, Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kalas noted that European leaders should not exclude this possibility, saying this could be a signal to Russia. Canadian Defence Minister Bill Blair said that his country was ready to send a limited number of military personnel to Ukraine but only to train Ukrainian soldiers and not for participation in hostilities. During a two-hour State of the Nation address, Russian President Vladimir Putin threatened tragic consequences if NATO troops were sent to Ukraine, claiming the West's support for Kyiv risks a conflict using nuclear weapons. Ukraine will attack the Russian army and infrastructure with 2 million drones. Ukraine is set to produce 2 million drones this year. Hanna Vodzdaya, Deputy Minister of Strategic Industries of Ukraine, said this. At the same time, she acknowledged that the current needs of Ukrainian troops far surpass the country's financial capabilities, even with the assistance of partners. Even with our partners, it would be difficult for us. However, we are working in this direction. Vodzaya stated, We are ramping up drone production, she added. Vodzaya addressed doubts raised among Ukrainians by President Zelensky's statement about producing a million drones, clarifying that, in terms of production, we are far beyond a million. I am confident that this year we will reach the mark of two million, Vodzaya emphasized. Highlighting the capability of Ukrainian drone manufacturers, the deputy minister mentioned they can already produce up to 150,000 units monthly. The drone sector in Ukraine involves around 200 domestic companies, with nearly 60 of them already included in state orders. In an interview with The Independent, Alexander Kamishin, the Minister of Strategic Industries, emphasized Ukraine's urgent need for ammunition due to the ongoing war with Russia. He noted that Ukraine requires an amount of ammunition that no single country can deliver, including the United States. Kamishin also highlighted that the capabilities of Ukraine's defense industry far exceed the funding currently available for its support. Ukraine is positioning itself as a global pioneer in unmanned technologies, according to Kamishin, with UAVs becoming a crucial weapon on modern battlefields. He expressed confidence that this year, Ukraine will produce over a million FPV drones and thousands capable of flying more than 1,000 kilometers, reaching oil refineries in Russia. In a meeting with Ukrainian and international journalists at the end of 2023, President Zelensky stated, we will produce one million drones next year. We will make a million. We will do everything to make it happen.